What's up everyone, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you how to evaluate a telescoping series, which is a series whose partial sums cancel to a finite number of terms. And the task for these four questions is to find an expression S of n, which represents the nth term of a sequence of partial sums, and then based on that we want to evaluate the series or state that the series diverges. So we got these four examples here and these are the steps, so we're going to get started. Okay, for the first question here, we're just going to go through the steps. So the first thing we want to do is write out the first few terms. So when k is equal to 1, we would have 1 over 1 plus 1, which gives us a half, minus 1 over 1 plus 2 is 3. So that would be the first term of the sum if we were only going out to k equals 1. But if we go out to k equals 2, you'll start to notice a trend here. 1 over 2 plus 1 gives us a third, and then we have minus 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 over 4. So at this step already, you see that the last term here cancels in the first set of parentheses, and then the first term cancels in the second set of parentheses. So if we had to make a prediction for the next part, if it's not obvious yet, let's just make that a little neater. We got k equals 3. We would have 1 over 3 plus 1 is 1 over 4. Each new term in the next set of parentheses cancels out the term before it. And the only thing that's left is the last term. So we have minus 1 over 3 plus 2, which is 1 over 5. So if we follow this pattern all the way down to k equals n, as n goes to infinity, we're going to have 1 over n plus 1 which is going to cancel minus 1 over n plus 2. So then if we call this expansion up to the nth term s of n, then the sum of the first n terms as n goes to infinity is going to be 1 half. The first term makes it all the way to the end. We have 1 half minus 1 over n plus 2. So now we have an expression for s of n but we're going to use that to evaluate the series or state that it diverges. But if we look here, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 minus 1 over n plus 2 is simply equal to 1 half. Because for this term here, as n goes to infinity, 1 over n plus 2 will go to 0. So this tells us that the series here, if we evaluate this sum from 1 to infinity, this series is going to work out to a value of 1 half. Okay, for the second question here, there's a little bit more to do. In order to make this resemble a telescoping series, we need to use the concept here of partial fractions and break this fraction here up into two separate fractions. So what we're going to do is, we're going to set up the expression a over the first factor, 4k minus 3, plus b over the second factor, 4k plus 1. And this is going to be equal to the original expression 4 over 4k minus 3 times 4k plus 1. So then when we do the algebra here, this is kind of like solving a rational equation. We multiply the first fraction here by 4k plus 1 over 4k plus 1. And that would give us a times 4k plus 1. And then the second fraction, we would multiply by 4k minus 3 over 4k minus 3, which would give us b times 4k minus 3. And then we could finally set this equal to 4. And with this, now we have enough information to solve for the values of a and b. So what we're going to do is we distribute. We have 4k times a plus a when we distribute the a through this binomial, and then we have plus 4k times b minus 3b when we distribute b through this term. But then the idea behind this technique is that, let's imagine I were to just write this in here, plus 0 times k. We're going to be able to use this information here to set up two equations and solve the system. So let's say for the two equations I group 4ka, 4kb, and 0k together. Well, this would tell us that 4ka 
plus 4kb is equal to 0k. Because they both have the same matching term. They're both terms involving k. And then the leftovers here, we have a minus 3b is equal to 4. So we would have a minus 3b is equal to 4. So then what we could do here, for one, we could get rid of this k term. Since they all have a common k, we can cross them out. But then notice to solve this system of equations, we need the coefficients to match for either an a term or a b term. So the top row we're going to multiply by 3, and the bottom row we're going to multiply by 4. We could have also just divided the top row by, uh, by 4, but since I already did this, we'll just move forward with this. So we'd have 12a plus 12b is equal to 0. And on bottom, we're going to have 4a minus 12b is equal to 16. So now when we add this system together, we have 16a, these terms cancel, is equal to 16, which is going to tell us here that a is equal to 1. Now, we could plug this into any of the original equations. We'll plug it into this one. So we would have a equals 1 minus 3b, which is equal to 4. And then from here, to solve, we subtract 1 on both sides. We've got negative 3b is equal to 3, which tells us that b is equal to negative 1. So with this information, we can now set up our fractions here to allow us to evaluate this sum. So moving on here, we have a is equal to 1. So we could rewrite this summation as the summation from k equals 3 to infinity of 1 over... 4k minus 3. And now b is equal to negative 1. So we could just say minus 1 over 4k plus 1. So since now that we solved for a and b, we could go ahead and substitute and rewrite our summation this way. So now let's go ahead and apply these steps. The sum of the first n terms, and we're starting at k equals 3, would give us 1 over and when we substitute in 3, we have 4 times 3 is 12, minus 3 is 9. So we have 1 ninth minus 1 over, and now we have 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So this would be the first term in the partial sum here. And then if we were to look at k equals 4, we would have 1 over 4 times 4 is 16, minus 3 is 13. So it would be 1 over 13. And notice right away, this last term is being canceled by this first term here. So it looks like we could start to see this cancellation pattern already. So we have 1 over 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. And this is where you should start trying to look for a ca cancellation pattern. I would bet that for k equals 5, the first term that pops up is going to be 1 over 17, which cancels out this one. So if we plug in, we have 1 over 4 times 5 is 20, minus 3 is 17. So sure as anything, this term cancels, and then we're left with 1 over 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So the pattern here is that up to the nth term, the first term of the new sum cancels, and we're left with the last term. So all we would have here is plus, and I'll write it down here where we have space, we would have 1 over 4n minus 3, which the first term cancels, minus 1 over 4n plus 1. So this tells us here that the sum of the first n terms is equal to 1 over 9 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. So if we want to find the sum of the series, we're taking a look at the limit as, as n goes to infinity of s of n, which is equal to 1 over 9 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. So if we work this out here, we could see that this second term here is going to cancel as n goes to infinity. This fraction will go to 0. So the sum of the series is going to be equal to 1 over 9. Okay, for the third question here, this one's a little bit different because now we're dealing with a natural log. 
But the move here to get this started is to separate this log into two separate logs. That way it could take the shape of a telescoping series. So we have the summation from k equals 1 to infinity. And what we could do is we could break this up into two different logs. We would have natural log of the numerator, k plus 1, minus natural log of the denominator. So we would just have natural log of k. So now that it's in this form, we could go ahead and write out the first few terms. We would have for k equals 1, and this is our sum of the first n terms. So if we were evaluating up to k equals 1, then we would have natural log of 1 plus 1, which is natural log of 2. Minus natural log of 1 would go in place here. But then if we go out further, now we're looking at k equals 2. Let's see what happens here. We would have natural log of 2 plus 1, which would give us natural log of 3, minus natural log of 2. So we'll go out a little bit more and see if we see this pattern here. We have up to k equals 3, because so far what we have is natural log 2, the first and the last term cancels here. So if we go out to k equals 3, now we're going to have natural log of 4, the first term stays, minus natural log of 3, which see now we have the first term and the last term canceling. So the pattern that we find here is that the new term that we introduce in the sum, the first term gets to stay and the second term cancels out. So if we continue this up to the nth term, we would have natural log of m plus 1. The first term stays, but minus natural log of n, this last term here would cancel. So then we just write down what we have left. But it's important to know here, I could say that natural log of 1 with the negative here stays, but natural log of 1 is equal to 0. So this term here cancels out. So the only thing that is left, because remember, the first, uh, the first term stays, but then at k equals 4, natural log of 4 would cancel out. The only thing left is the first term of the last part of the partial sum, which would be natural log of n plus 1. So then to answer this question, does this series converge or diverge? In this case, the series is going to diverge because the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of natural log of m plus 1. But if we notice, like natural log is a strictly increasing function. So as n goes to infinity, natural log of m plus 1 goes to infinity. So this tells us, so the series diverges. Okay, now for this last question here, we're dealing with the series involving a sine function. We're going to follow the same steps. We're going to write out the first few terms. So if we're looking for an expression for the sum of the first n terms, we'll check out here at k equals 1. At k equals 1, we would have sine of, and we would have 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 2 pi over 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And then minus sine of, at k equals 1, we'd have 1 pi over 2 times 1 minus 1. So we'd have pi over 2 minus 1 is 1, which would just give us sine of pi over 1 or just sine of pi. But now we're going to keep going here to look for that pattern. So we have up to k equals 2. Now we've got sine of 2 plus 1 for the first part here. We're plugging in k equals 2 gives us 3 pi over 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. So, so far, nothing is canceling just yet, but let's see. So, at k equals 2, we plug into the second part. We have sine of 2 pi over 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So, here we go. We have our first cancellation here. We have sine of 2 pi over 3 canceling the minus sine of 2 pi over 3. So it looks like when we introduce the next term, the first term and the last term cancel. So what might happen here for k equals 3 
is we're going to have sine of 3 pi over 5 cancel out with another sine of 3 pi over 5, which will show up at the end. So let's see if that happens. So we have k equals 3, and we've got sine of 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So we've got 4 pi over 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And then we've got minus, and when we plug in k equals 3 to the second part, we have 3 pi over 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So, yep, exactly like we said here, sine of 3 pi over 5 is going to cancel out here. So as this pattern continues, it looks like the first term of the new partial sum is going to stay and the ending term cancels. So if we go and use this pattern and go all the way out to k equals n, now what we're going to have here is sine of m plus 1 times pi over 2m plus 1 minus sine of n pi over 2n minus 1. But like we said before, every time we introduce a new term by k equals 4, this first term here would cancel out. But then once we get to the last term here, the first term stays, and the last term, let's give another parenthesis here so it's accurate, and the last term cancels. So this is the leftovers. And notice here, I could write the sum of the first n terms with the minus sine of pi, but sine of pi is equal to zero. So this, I could just cancel out altogether. So all that's left is sine of, we've got n plus one times pi over two n plus one. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out here, I can already see where this is going. Uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of m plus one over two n plus one is equal to a half because we have a rational function here where they have matching coefficients for the leading terms so the limit as n goes to infinity is just the ratio of the coefficients so when we evaluate this all we need to consider here is that the limit of the polynomial part is equal to a half so that's going to work out to sine of, and all that's left is 1 half times pi, which gives us pi over 2. This tells us that the sum of the first n terms as n goes to infinity is equal to 1. So this is our solution to the last question. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on evaluating telescoping series. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, future topics that you want me to cover in the next video, leave them in the comments section below. And thank you for watching.